Hi everyone, it's Holly Marie King and we are back with Amaris. We left off after we got Lex's phone number and now we are still at the club. Let's see if there's any... I kind of... I want to talk to this guy. I like their tail. Oh, he's a shy... Does he have... A... Despite him being alone at the bar of one of the most active nightclubs I'd seen in recent memory, my eye was drawn to the slender feline leaning over his book. He would sit there for a long moment, and then without cue, he would scribble frantically in the leather-bound journal spread out before him. Now and then, he would lift his glass from the bar and lean back, pausing to take a drink as if someone was expecting him to. This adorable ruse was undermined, however, as each sip was followed by a grimace of barely contained disgust. Uh, I don't really want to talk to them. I, I, I don't want to talk to anyone else. I strolled over to the bar as he turned back to his notebook, stopping at the edge before politely coughing to grab his attention. He looked up, eyes blinking open wide and his mouth slightly agape. Clearly, he expected to be a little more invisible than he really was. I'm sorry to interrupt, but do you mind if I ask what you're drinking? Oh, oh, it's a 12-year-old scotch. I figured I'd try something a little more direct than the usual mixed drinks you'd get at a nightclub. It's it's very, uh, very smooth but complex. Do you really, do you normally drink glasses of scotch by yourself in the crowded nightclubs? Well, I, I couldn't just sit at the bar without something in my hand and there's no better place in town to people watch. Though the better question would be, what brought you over here to ask what I was drinking? I saw your tail. Because you looked like you were drinking turpentine every time you took a sip. I, as I settled into the stool next to him, his cheeks flushed red as he glanced between me and his drink. I don't really drink much. I assumed as much, though that does still beg the question as to why you're in a bar, particularly if you don't drink. Oh, and it's ghost, by the way. Sorry, I know questions first are, isn't exactly the best manners. You just seemed a little out of your element. Seth, I'm Seth. I'll admit it's an escape, but it's also to help me work through the creative process. Many famous authors immerse themselves in the popular culture of their day to draw new experiences and observe people in new environments. I suppose that's true. I thought most of them indulged, in part because it was their particular interest, more than strict to research. You don't strike me as the type to write romance or erotica, though. Why would you think that? I mean, I, I don't, but... Why would you assume that is the only motivation for me to be at the, this club? Mostly because even the bouncers are wearing half the clothing you are and because I came here with my brother Kobe specifically because this is his favorite place to meet guys for a fling. You have to admit, your choice of ambience suggests something more than just curiosity about popular culture. By now, he was blushing furiously, the spots of red visible beneath his snowy white cheek fur. Despite his attempt to be... At appearing aloof, something spoke about his relative discomfort in being here. <coughs> I breathed in. Miles bit. I'm not here to judge. It's just, well, interesting. I get enough stories from Kobe to get an idea of how this place tends to function, and you appear to be actively avoiding that function. Well, I, I, I'm holding my crap, trying to push myself outside of my comfort zone, so I have a breadth of experience to write from. It's the sort of thing authors do. Uh, you sure you're not just lonely? It's the major reason most people come here, you know? Aside from the drinks and the dance floor. It, is the, that a blatant attempt to hit on me? I assure you. I'm not just here for some random hookup with someone to put... To up my self-esteem. Are you sure? Are you sure? Because I don't recall us discussing each other's preferences and yet you suggest I'm trying to hit on you. It's not an unreasonable assumption, as you've suggested. It's a social place, and there's are plenty of sexually flexible individuals here. And yet you assume I'm here to hit on you specifically, and that I d do it just to boost your self-esteem? He stammered for a moment, his mouth opening as if I, if to speak before he fell silent. A short, flustered snort flared his nostrils as he moved to pack up his things. Uh, you leaving just because of that? Don't you think you're being a little oversensitive about this? I I'm trying to get things done here, and I certainly don't need some random stranger showing up and casting apprehensions about my intentions. 
So you being in a social environment and admitting you came here because of the people doesn't already suggest anything? Why are you so upset about admitting you might be here to meet people? He shoved his notebook card into his shoulder bag, spinning around to face me across the table with his eyes narrowed and smoldering with rage. I'm upset because I just want to work. I want to relax. I don't want to dance or gyrate. I'm not here to look cute or lost. I'm just here to get away for a bit. That's all. He let out a long sigh, collapsing back into his seat and closing his eyes for a moment. Sorry, it's just... Apparently looking like Lost Little Lamb is an aphrodisiac to most of the people here. Most of my evening has been sent rebuffing others of sexual favors and suggestions that I should loosen up and join them in the bathroom for a fleeing. Well, if I may be so bold, what brought you to this club tonight? Since you clearly aren't driven by a desire to quietly observe, nor are you obviously looking to get drunk or dance, I'm curious as to what your motivation is. Mostly, I guess, to keep myself occupied and distracted. Kobe, my brother, very much likes this place, but doesn't always want to go alone. I needed time away from my problems, and he wanted a ride. A match made in, well, necessity. Well then, where else might you have gone if you had the option? Ignoring cost, location, or any of that. Some are quiet, some are interesting. To be a little more restrained, so I probably would have gone somewhere a little quieter. A library, museum, or something like that. Somewhere I can make my own thoughts. A smile twitched at the edges of his mouth as he scribbled into his notebook. He tapped the eraser against the page before looking back up at me thoughtfully. Feeling a bit out of your element, too, then. I can certainly understand that feeling, but it's always good to break out of your comfort zone. He seemed to be rather thrilled with his pseudo-interrogation. He looked back up from his notebook with excitement. So, being that we are in the, this club, and you already expressed curiosity as to why I'm here, what do you like about this club? When I'm feeling mopey or just have too much time, I like to find other people to be around. Conversation, laughs, and banter between friends really helps to perk me back up. He looked a little surprised, jotting down a few extra lines in his notebook before I see back up there. Oh. I suppose I should be flattered you've directed your attentions to just me then. Extroverts commonly don't enjoy hanging, engaging with me for extended periods of time. So we've established where you want to be and why you want to be there. But the big question is, who do you want to be there with? What kind of person would you be looking for at this club? I get the feeling that this is a somewhat pointed question. I also get the feeling that there is something more going on here than simple research. He shot me a Cheshire cat grin and placed a hand on his chest in mock shock. Clearly, he was enjoying this intimate game of 20 questions. Maybe it makes me a little shallow, but I like someone who's put together nicely, great eyes, firm body, and knows all the right moves. Someone who puts some work into their appearance. The expression on his face suggested that he didn't expect that answer. He got quiet for a moment before scribbling something down. Well, who among us wouldn't want to meet someone who exemplifies our physical ideal? In reality, we are all a little shallow, I suppose. Alright, one more question, and then I really should find Kobe and figure out what he has planned for the rest of the night. I suppose I have been prying pretty heavily that said, you have been a very interesting character. To study to say that least, it's rare I actually get to interact with someone. I'd hoped I was more than just an intellectual diversion. Is that not the case? I didn't mean it like that. I mean, it's been interesting talking with you. I've been here for a couple of hours already, and you're the first person who stopped to talk that didn't want to take a drink order. I smiled and leaned on the bar. He was awfully cute when he desperately tried to regain his composure. So, what's the last question? He hesitated, glancing down at his notebook for a second before scribbling something in the margins. As he looked back up, I could see his cheeks were still quite flushed. I was heading to the library tomorrow to do some research for a story, and there was a reading I was thinking of going to. Could I convince you to come along? Sure. I'd love to. What time? Really? I mean, uh, great, the reading is a little before noon, but I'll be there early. Let me give you my number so you can call and let me know when you get there. He tore off the corner of a notebook page, absentmindedly leaving a snippet of poetry in the upper half, and passed it to me. Thanks. It'll be nice to have someone else there. It's always a little awkward to go alone. Sounds like a date, then. 
I, I suppose it is. I, I need to get going, but be sure to call me as soon as you're up. I'll make sure to save us a seat. After gathering his things, he shot me another adorable smile and strolled off towards the door. I folded up the paper and slipped it into my pocket. I got another number! I like this dude. My hand barely touches the counter before the bartender is right in front of me. From here, I can see that his uniform while dapper is clearly tailored for the club. His sleeveless vest and cuffed wrists are capped by a revealing tuxedo, child brief as well. Despite his state of near undress, he seems quite chipper and buffs down the counter in front of me with a rag. Welcome to Amorous, hottest club in town. I'm Jax and I'll be your beverage artisan this evening. He winks at me before continuing. What can I do for you? Uh, let's flirt. To be honest, you're not what I was expecting in a bartender either. Cute, well-dressed, and quite charming. Are you busy after work? Flattering as that is, I make it a point not to get involved with customers. It gets messy. I'll flirt more. I can do messy. I might even like messy. I smiled broadly until I noticed his expression changing. That makes one of us. He cleared his throat a little and put back on a smile. You're a nice guy, but there's a reason I don't do that. Let me know if you need a refill. Never mind, thanks. Okay. Alright, let's talk to Kobe. Hey bro, can I borrow you for a second? What's up? Uh... Met anyone yet? How's the manhunt going? Still working up the courage to ask someone out. It can be hard to tell if they're looking at you or the girls behind you. People here are a bit more open, but still don't want to misread the signals, you know? I can see about ten guys that are literally interested in just from here. Uh, I'm gonna head out. I think I've just about had all the fun I can have here. Do you mind if we head home? Yeah, you sure you want to go? I normally go all night, but I'm happy to go whenever you are. You just let me know when you're sure. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, it's late. I wouldn't mind calling it a night. Fair enough. I appreciate you coming tonight. You'll have to tell me about how it went on the way home. Rowdy in here. It's rowdy in here. Ugh, I miss the it's. It was refreshing to step outside. The bouncer gave us a gentle wave, sharpie in hand, and he addressed the next in line. I felt a little bad for pressuring Kobe to leave earlier than he usually would have, but he was all smiles. He was just happy that I came, I suppose. He insisted on driving. Drinking apparently put him off his game. After all the excitement, I barely recall what we talked about on the way home. It just flew by. It's funny, the trip to the club just felt like a lifetime. I guess I was more nervous than I should have been. But now to over but not best not to overthink it. We passed out quickly when we got home, still riding the high of the evening. Oh, the first time I've slept in late for reasons other than being a loafer. Seems like Kobe is already up. Either that or he just dropped me off and went back clubbing. The whole thing still feels kind of surreal. I should check my phone to see if I ended up getting any new contacts. Or if it was just one of those weird dreams. Uh, I would love to, but my achievements are in the way. I had a pretty good time chatting with Lex outside the club. Maybe I should give him a call. Hey, it's you, Ghost. Right? Hey, Lex. Yeah, that's right. I figured I'd give you a call. See what you were up to. Nothing much right now. Just in the middle of work. Oh, I'm not interrupting, I hope. Nah, so long as I get the project done in time, they don't really care. Don't exactly need to keep office hours when I work from home. Anyway, what's up? Just wanted to say thanks for the other night. I was wondering if you were free to hang out. I'm just checking if you were doing okay. Not right now, but I'll be free later this evening. What do you say? Want to hit up a bar for some drinks? 
I'm talking actual drinking drinking too, so bring your game face. Ha! <laughs> Looking to get me wasted, huh? Gonna try. You look like enough of a lightweight that I can take you. You're on, Lex. Right. Well, I'll see you later, okay? I'll text the address over in a sec. See you there, Lex. Take a cab, dude. I'll cover it if you want. See you later. Click. I guess I said the bar was in a rough part of town. If Lex parks at Amherst, I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, I've got some time to kill before I go. Guess I've got time to email off a few applications and get something a little more nighttime appropriate to wear. Should they wear a suit or cocktail dress? Wear raver gear. I'm not going to change for Lex. Wear something casual, t-shirt and jeans. More punk appropriate? Wear something gothic. Punk? does punk look like the time passed quickly as i whiled away the afternoon on a few unlikely job applications and catching up on a few youtube shows i showered up and was ready for the club cab by the time the night set in i'd have to pace myself tonight if lux had anything to say about it i i didn't mean to like totally not hang out with what's his butt the other guy I was going to call him next, but apparently you can only call one person. The bar wasn't too far from Amaris. It was further away from the beachfront and a few blocks from the commercial side of the city. The building wasn't much to look at from the street. The sign was simply painted and lit by a spotlight either side. Waiters, or winking waiters as the sign read, was a small squat building painted on a white and black motif on the outside with black shutters that could be pulled over the frosted glass windows. Bugs had mentioned that the place catered to bikers in the car park reflected that. The row of bike spaces along a rail by the bar like an old-fashioned hitching post in a cowboy movie. Cool place. I like that we like it. Lux was waiting outside, sitting on the middle rail, kicking their boots back and forth and smoking a cigarette. They waved me over with a cocky salute, swinging their legs back over the rail, up onto the ramp to the doors, as I made my way up the steps that divided the bike spaces. Hey Lex, didn't keep you waiting long, did I? Nah, I was just chilling here. Anyway, let's get going. You bet! The of the pub was spacious. A huge lacquered bar was set up up opposite in the doors in the muted sound of the pool balls clattered under the music coming from either side of the bar where doors led to a large room in the back where they must play you could glimpse the players sometimes when a bartender moved through their own door to the rear bar a mirror to this one but on the other side of the wall small tables were set up from side front side of the building i have a populated already but a few guys oh our own ages, and some older veterans in leathers and bandanas. I got the feeling the rougher side of the bar was at the back. The music was indeed more Lexus speed, a rockier beat and more alternative clientele. Well, perhaps Amaris had the most alternate lifestyle club goers. Ha! So come on, dude. Did you change into that stuff just for the occasion? The bunker style is more my speed. I figured it was more appropriate. I figured you'd prefer it. It's making not it's maybe not something I'd wear to fit in at Amaris, but I figured that since we're we'd be hanging out at a cooler bar, I should hide my true color I shouldn't hide my true colors. Figured I shouldn't try to impress anyone. Fucking A. Heh. So what you drinking anyhow? I'm thinking beer myself. We took a seat on the bar at the bar on well worn but well maintained stools and Lux cast a hand over the selection of liquor bottles and beer type taps. <sighs> Let's do something heavy. Whiskey. Ha, you're confident, huh? Well, cool. I can take I can keep up. Cool. Let me get the first round. Lux ordered up with the promising with me promising to get the next round. The place was a lot quieter than Amorous was, and it was a lot easier to hold a conversation. I was hoping not to get too drunk and make an idiot of myself when... So, Ghost, you ever played Easy Way, Hard Way? No, I don't think I've heard of that. It's a drinking game. 
kind of like in Never Have I Ever, we take turns asking questions. If it's an easy question, then the person who answers has to drink. If it's a hard question, then the person who asks has to drink, too. That doesn't sound like much of a game. Lex shrugged and flashed me a playful grin as they kicked my stool with a boot gently. I'll truth or dare without the dare part is just lame. Anyway, it gives you us topics whilst we chill out. So if I ask an awkward question, we both have to drink because otherwise only you have to. Pretty much, you're supposed to kind of mix it up, and but... It always ends up with some weird questions. Oh, and if you ask the same question again, you have to drink, even if the other person brought it up for the brought it up the first time. And I guess if we get too drunk, we won't get the great answers. But maybe I'd get a funnier answer for something if I waited. All right, I'm ready. Okay, easy random question to start with. Box brief, boxers briefs, or something else. Whew. Briefs. Right on. Then you drink or we both drink. Then you ask your question easy. Let's ask a hard question. What's your saddest moment? What's your most fun memory? Hmm. What's your sexiest story? Are you a boy or a girl? Hmm. Hey, oh, okay, but you're drinking too on this one. Yeah. Fair enough. Right. Well, let's pre preface this with that it happened at college. You know, I'm totally not going to tell you their names or get into any weird details. You're getting the diluted friends safe version. Well, anyway, so there was this guy in my illustration class and we got to be pretty good friends. We weren't ever official or anything like that, but we hooked up a lot in our second year. Like I said before, it usually takes me a long time to want to do stuff with people, but yeah. So he lived local and I used to hang out with him a lot at his house. So shit, this sounds fucking stupid and it makes none of us look good either. So I was taking a shower and we used to do shit in there sometimes, so I left the door unlocked. But he had a sister, a half sister I think, who was like maybe a year or two older than we were. You didn't, yup, really? Lux was bright red and squirmed in their seat in a way that was simultaneously cute and very out of character for their tough beer drinking persona. Yeah, though, to be honest, it was a thing that sort of come up before when I was hanging out there. I knew she was into me and stuff. Like I said, we don't exactly seem not like assholes, but me and the guy were open sexually and neither of us wanted to date. I actually ended up getting close, like, emotionally to the sister and we almost dated for a while too they weren't like weird about it which maybe says more about them than about me but yeah i guess that shower stuff counts guess that answers if you're bi or whatever too oh yeah that stuff doesn't bother me too much i know a lot of people who see what they want to see in me or whatever i'm the same i guess it doesn't matter much to me do the three of you ever, you know, I'm sure there's statutes on that in some states that would stop me from being able to clarify certain details. Lex, they were half-siblings and a very athletic family. Anyway, drink, drink and forget. Another one draw down the hatch. Cheers, dude. Lex down their drink easily and gave me a grin through their pearly teeth. I guess they can handle their booze easily enough. Okay. You asked a weird sex question, so I want to know your most public sex story. Fair's fair. Let's see. Well, that's an easy question. Well, I think I said before, but I like those old school arcade games, so I guess one of those would maybe count. Probably have some dead too. The first one was good, but the second boss was like a total quarter stealer. I played that one before, yeah. That was before they introduced the shotgun one, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, they actually brought the whole Have Some Dead series out on the Nintendo 3. The wands aren't anywhere near as cool as the light guns from the arcade, but it's still pretty cool. Let me guess, you were one of those kids who really got into the guns. Ha, maybe? The shitty thing about the home version is that you can't dual wield because you need the phone chucks, you know? 
the player one and two at the same time and use both guns. I usually used to love doing that. It made me feel like an action hero. You know, there's other pretty cool games out on console these days. Brazen and Blur in another cool series that is sort of like an old arcade fighting game, but on the con but on console. It's a 2D fighter, but with rock music as the background. We should totally play sometime. I get the feeling you might kick my ass. Nah, I'd play nice. Lex snickered into the glasses. They took another long drink. They were looking a little rosy cheeked, but stuck up out their tongue as they ordered another glass for us both. Okay, I've got a question for you. What was your dream job when you were a kid? Let's see. <sighs> I don't want to know. Dude, okay. I told you that was such a lame topic to me. So, we're both drinking just because of having to have it. I've got to ask, what gender do you think I am? Uh, I don't know. Well, let me put it this way. Whether I stand up or sit down to pee doesn't really affect hanging out with a friend. I like you guys, but I don't like you enough yet for what's between my legs to be relevant. I'm sorry, Lex. You're right. I shouldn't be worrying about that stuff. I was just curious. I think you're pretty awesome, Ghost, but I did say that it took me a while with that college friend of mine. You're overthinking this shit. I wouldn't just drop that on you when I was over when I was ready. That'd be totally uncool. Okay, drink time. Then it's my question. That glass was definitely a tipping point. I could feel the tingly warmth flushing my cheeks as, as li a little as we shared our stories. I was well and truly buzzed now. Good thing I got a cab. Lex took another big drink, slamming the glass down. Triumphant, they snickered, tail wagging mischievously. Told you this was a fun game. Okay, what about your favorite book or book series? Let's see. I'm gonna. I wanna see. Ha! Dude, you already asked that one. Take yourself a drink. Ha! I figured you'd probably be done by now, dude. No chance, dude. Ha! Ah, can we. Phew, down the hatch. I can feel myself sinking into that dizzy off balance feeling when I move my head. I'm probably pretty close to done for now. Ah, dude, you already asked that one. Okay, that definitely hit the spot. If I don't want to be sick in the morning, I should probably stop. One more. Er, neither one down. <laughs> oh, random, a plug? I guess. I don't have a ton of toys, dude. Shit. <laughs> Lex gave a snicker and playfully punched my arm. The whole world seemed to tumble and over and for a moment, and I almost fell off my stool before I got a grip on the bar to stop myself. Dude, you're fucking drunk. Nah, okay, maybe that's true. Yeah, okay, game over it is. Ha, huh, you got me pretty good there, ghost. I kind of figured you'd be a lightweight. Lex laughed, seeming more jolly with multiple beers down, flicking their hair over their eyes. They gave me a curious look above a warm smile that I couldn't help but find a little sweet in its own way. Well, it was a good couple hours of swapping the shit. Maybe we should call it a night? Lex seemed to pause for a moment before offering their hand out. As I went to shake, they gave a high five, then a fist pound and a cool fluid motion. I guess I should have figured the slap and dab was more Lex's style than a stuffy handshake before a hug. Tonight was fucking awesome, dude. Give me a call when you're free next, right? Sure thing, Lex. I'll let you know. I got a home a little later, stumbling into my room, exhausted and a little drunk from the night. I crashed out easily. I got the feeling my time with Lex might have gone better if I stuck around longer, but no point in rushing it. Got testing the waters. Mmm, it's morning already. Nope. Let's call Lex really quick. So long as Lex doesn't start up that drinking game, it might be nice to hang out again. Hey, ghost? Hey, Lex, have you got a moment? Sure, dude. Was hoping you'd call. Yeah? I had to admit, it was nicer than I expected to hear Lex say that. Ha, huh, yeah. So what's up? I was wondering if you wanted to hang out again. Hell yeah, that sounds awesome, actually. I did get a text earlier from the gang wanting to hang out. Would you be up for that? Sure. The gang? Do I need to be worried? 
<laughs> nah, I don't even mean like a literal gang, just the guys. And yeah, maybe leave out the ammo stuff. They'd get too much ammo out of that, but they're good people. So going to waiters again? Nah, not this time. It's a surprise. I'll come pick you up later tonight. Anybody I need to bring? A flashlight? Maybe a jacket or something? Probably wouldn't dress up too fancy either. Are we going caving or something? Something like that. I'm not going to spoil it and give you a chance to back out, huh? Okay, I'll quit being a dork about it. Don't entirely quit that. Just be yourself, dude. I'll swing around. Uh, swing by around 9. See you then, Lex. See you, ghost. Click. I guess I have a little time to kill beforehand. Plenty of time to grab a jacket. Alright. Hmm. Okay, flashlight and something to wear at night. I've got room for something else if I need it. Alright, I'm gonna end this here. We're making good progress with, uh, with Lex. So hopefully things go well for us so that we can have a good date with Lex. I'm bummed that I messed it up with the girl, but I didn't realize that my person was going to be so freaking vulgar about it. Jeez. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, please leave a like. If you know someone who likes this video, please share it. If you are interested in this kind of content, I do visual novels every Monday. Uh, but yeah, hopefully I will see you guys next time. Bye.